Let's learn in this lightboard session how to implement the AKS landing zone. For an enterprise who wants to build a platform that is based on a solid and proven architecture that uses the Azure best practices in terms of security, scalability, and governance, they will typically use the Azure Platform Enterprise Scale. That will be the foundational platform on top of which we can deploy other applications or other platforms like the landing zones for either AKS, for container apps, for app services, for OpenShift on Azure, and many more. Let's see how that works with AKS. Let's learn in this Lightboard session how to implement the AKS landing zone within the platform enterprise scale. Most organizations will use the enterprise scale in order to make sure to use Azure with respect to the best practices in terms of security, scalability, disaster recovery, and so on. To implement the AKS landing zone, we should first have the platform enterprise scale. And this is actually a set of Terraform scripts or ARM templates or BICEP with, uh, with a set of policies and a set of Azure resources that will make sure to build the basic or the foundational platform on top of which we'll go to deploy the landing zones. So that a platform enterprise scale will contain some uh, elements or some Azure resources, like for example, the virtual network, and that's gonna be the main component. So let's say all of this is actually the virtual network for the hub. It can have one or multiple hubs, of course. And within those virtual network, we will find uh, this is gonna be actually the centralized virtual network that will contain mainly the Azure firewall or any NVA or firewall that could be Azure or some other third party uh, firewalls. So that firewall will have its own public IP address and it can also have its own private IP address. And it might also contain some other resources like a bastion machine or a bastion host. And that bastion host will have also its own IP. So the arrow actually will go in this direction right here. And that bastion will be used in order to access to some virtual machines within the hub. And from there, it can access to other resources from uh, the other spokes that we'll explore in a second. So here we would have machines that will act as jump box. And in addition to these resources, we might also find some other resources like public DNS zone. So from here, we will find one or multiple DNS uh, zones in addition to the private DNS zone. You can also find the connections for the NAT gateway, for example, to connect to a private, to an express route or to a site to site VPN. And of course, we'll find also uh, lots of other resources like the Azure policies, the airbag roles, the tools to manage the identity, the management groups to organize the different subscriptions and so on. And on the other hand, we will find here the platform or the application landing zone. And in our case today, that's gonna be the AKS landing zone. And then the application landing zone should be represented again with another virtual network, but in this time it's gonna be the spoke virtual network. So all of this will live inside its own virtual network also. And this one we'll call it the VNet for the scope. And this virtual network actually will be connected to the hub virtual network through the VNet peering. So between the two we would have that connectivity in both directions through VNet peering. VNet peering means that resources from here can connect to here and resources from here can connect to these ones. And here within this application landing zone specifically for AKS, we'll find, of course, first main component that's gonna be the AKS cluster. What is specific about this AKS cluster is that for some organizations that will require that the egress traffic for this AKS should go through the Azure firewall in order to be filtered here. And then the firewall will decide depending on the firewall policies if that, uh, uh, if that traffic can go out or not. So from here with the firewall, we will find some other firewall policies. And for that AKS cluster, in order to be able to route all the egress traffic to the firewall, it should use the UDR mode, which is the user defined routing. 
UDR. How that works? So actually, AKS will need to use inside of its uh, subnet it needs to use a route table. So we need to define a route uh, table, and that route table will go to route all the egress traffic into the private IP address of the firewall. So this route table will route to the uh, firewall. Now this AKS cluster will expose the internal services to the end users through either public IP or private IP address, either exposing publicly or internally those services. It will achieve that through using an application gateway. So it can use any ingress controller like Nginx ingress controller or it can also use the app Nginx uh, or the application gateway Agic in order to get the users traffic into there. So the users will connect into my cluster through their uh, browsers, for example. And then they will be able to reach to that application gateway through its uh, public IP address. The AKS cluster, actually, we need also to have a log analytics in order to collect the logs from the cluster. It might also need Prometheus and Grafana as Azure Managed uh, Services. And we'll find also the managed identities that will be used in order to assign the right airbag roles so that the AKS uh, pods can access securely to some other Azure resources. The AKS cluster will also need to have a, an ACR or a container registry like ACR. So from here, we would have an ACR cluster or an ACR resource in Azure. And that ACR will live into a public IP or a public endpoint. However, we can expose it to the virtual network of the cluster using private endpoints so that we can disable the public endpoint of the ACR and then expose it publicly into the cluster through using a resource of type private endpoint. And we can do the same thing with Azure Key Vault. So we can expose it through a private endpoint into the virtual network or onto the subnet of the cluster. And again, the same thing for this storage account or a database. So with this way, we would have the both components for uh, implementing the enterprise scale. First is the platform enterprise scale, which will implement the foundational elements or the foundational resources like the bastion, the firewall, the DNS resolution. And then on the other hand, we would have the application landing zone for implementing the AKS uh, landing zone where we would have the AKS cluster, the route tables, the application gateway for ingress controllers, the log analytics, Prometheus, uh, managed identities, and the private endpoints that will get access to the registry, the key vault, and the storage. Thank you.